Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio Community. My name is John, and for this video, we will cover the 2021 upgrade of the Macintosh Labs MX123 for 8K capabilities. Along with this, we will cover the other models uh, within the AV processor range of Macintosh and also do a comparison against the Lingdorf MP60 2.1, also 8K capable, and the Marantz AV8805A, also 8K capable. And it's a good thing we've run a series of these processors and receivers that have HDMI 2.1 8K uh, capabilities over the last several months. Uh, we started with the uh, first one, Yamaha, in August. We did a video on Pioneer in early September, followed by Onkyo in September 16th. And that Onkyo one compared against uh, Pioneer. Uh, then we did Denon uh, at the end of September, followed by Marantz uh, towards the end of September. That included a comparison with Denon. And we decided to cover Lingdorf before Macintosh because we really wanted to uh, compare when we did the Macintosh, which its MX170 is based on, and having uh, covered Marantz, the, the AV8805, in October, we could then look at the MX123, which is based off of that model. Uh, so let's get into this. This could be exciting for all of us, uh, the Macintosh range. And it starts with their flagship, which is the MX170. Now, as of this time, we have not received any reports of when an 8K HDMI 2.1 update will be available for this model. This model was introduced in 2019. It sells for around $15,000. It's a 16-channel processor. Uh, it has the classic Macintosh styling, as all these models do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a robust, high-quality unit. And uh, as I said, this is based off the Lingdorf uh, model. And, and uh, so... It's not exactly the same, but shares a lot of characteristics with that uh, model that, that Lingdorf makes for Macintosh. Uh, but let's look at the highlight for this uh, video itself, which is the MX123. This is the updated model. Now, unlike uh, others that we've seen where they've actually changed the model number, Macintosh has kept the model at MX123, and they call this an update for this model to have the HDMI 2.1 of 8K capability uh, in this model. So they probably updated the, the board that's in there, similar to the way that the Marantz, which this is based off of, did. So this is a 2021 variation of the MX123 with that update. It's an AV processor. It processes 15 channels. And, uh, you know, you can see inside, the only picture we could find is a picture of the HDMI board. Uh, this was the prior generation than when it was only uh, uh, the, the HDMI 2.0 with 4K capability. So if anybody has some interior shots of Macintosh gear, we'd love to see them because they're hard to come by. Looking at the next model, and the final model in the Macintosh range, they have three. This is the MX100. This is a very slim, uh, simplified version of an AV processor. It's only up to 13 channels of processing. This comes in at the entry level price of $5,000 and was introduced at 2020, in 2020, and we covered this model when we did this, uh, our video on Macintosh November of 2020 when it was first introduced. Uh, so no changes that we're aware of since that time. We have, like the 170, we haven't heard of any planned uh, announced dates 
for when this model might have 8K capability. So we just leave it as it is. Looking at these side by side, we can you know see that it goes from 16 channels down to 13 channels. You know the prices are you know go, uh, go down respectively for each of the uh, the models. You know the 170s at fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. The MX 123 still hold hold steady at eight thousand dollars, and the MX 100 is a five thousand dollar unit. And uh, so these are all come out within a couple of years of each other. Uh, the 123 and the 170 appear to uh, actually we will see in the dimension slide later on. They're the the same physical dimensions. I think they share the same chassis. Although the face plate and, and, and back plate are different, and obviously the MX100 is much slimmer. Uh, and these are all processors. Macintosh does not make a receiver model. Uh, they had other ones in their line, line last year. They've discontinued those since. And this is what remains. Looking at the flagship, the MX170, against the Lingdorf most compatible, uh, comparable model, which is the MP62.1, we can see that these are physically much different, albeit they're buying the technology from uh, Lingdorf as well as probably some components that go into this when they manufacture the 170. Uh, interesting enough, they're selling for about the same price within a dollar uh, that I could tell. Uh, but the Lingdorf has been updated to 8K, and the 170 hasn't, and we wait for that announcement. Uh, we would assume that uh, the Lingdorf as a supplier should be able to deliver to them the same 8K capability. Uh, the remotes are somewhat different. Uh, you know, it's it seems like Macintosh, while they get components from third parties for these processors, they want to retain, and I think it's a very good thing, the Macintosh styling. And so they, they for the remotes, for the faceplate and everything, is pure Macintosh, uh, despite being derived from the third party. If we look at the Macintosh MX123, side by side by its um, unit that it's derived from the Marantz, AV8805A, these are both 8K. They're both updated in 2021. Of course, the Marantz came out a few months earlier. And uh, they're both 15-channel models. The remotes are exactly the same, except for some colorization and the logos, of course. Uh, the Marantz, we have an interior picture for. We can assume the Macintosh may be similar. But are they using a little different power supplies? We suspect so. Uh, the weights are a little different on these products. Now let's get into the comparison. And what I've done here is I've drawn a little bracket between the models that are, are um, based on each other. And what we see is some consistency here. We are seeing that the 16-channel uh, models you know, support the same speaker layout options and configurations. You know, the, the flagships are that 7.1.4 to 9.1.6, although there's flexibility. If you want to have more subwoofers, you trade off the, um, the heights or the uh, get rid of your front wides and so forth to, to uh, bring in up to five subwoofers, as long as your account doesn't go over 16 channels. And this is Lingdorf has made that very flex flexible uh, for both their own and as well as Macintosh uh, equivalent. The one difference that we see on the first two models is the support for surround formats. Now, of course, all these models support the Atmos and DTSX. That appears to be the baseline to support those two, no matter what you're looking at. But uh, although the MX170 has enough channels to support DTSX Pro, it does not, and the Lingdorf does. So that's interesting. Uh, they both support Oral 3D, as well as all these models, except for the entry-level MX100, which does not have Oral 3D with its 13 channels of support. The uh, 
when you get into the 123 versus the M the AV8805 from Marantz, again, it's the same speaker layouts. This will range from a 7.2.6 to a 9.2.4 configuration. Uh, so it's their 13.2 processor. Uh, the two independent subwoofer channels on these uh, on these models here. And all of these have independent subwoofer uh, uh, control on this, which is very good to see. When we look at uh, some of the details here, uh, they all have Ethernet. Uh, they don't all have wireless. The only ones that have wireless are the MX123 and the AV8805 uh, capabilities. And uh, one thing that we don't see on any of these models is an AM-FM tuner. And I'm just looking here as far as headphone support. Uh, the only model that has it is the Marantz AV8885, but it's a its counterpart, the Macintosh MX123, doesn't have a headphone jack on it. So you're not, it's not the end of the world for Macintosh. If you but if you want to have a headphone uh, connection. Well, Macintosh makes a product for you. You could use something like their MAHA150 headphone amplifier and spend another $5,000. Now, it's a beautiful unit, but that's a lot to spend uh, for some people. And likewise, you can buy an external AM-FM tuner from Macintosh. And I really like the, uh, the old-fashioned dial that they have in their uh, Reminds you of uh, products up through the 70s uh, that we could do your tuning through that. But they also have the digital down there. And that's their MR87 AM FM tuner and also $5,000. So adding $10,000 to this price so you, of, of these units so you can have a tuner and a headphone uh, jack uh, uh, isn't for everybody, but it's there if you want it. Let's move on. And... Uh, we're seeing here just the uh, screenshot showing the, the similarities in, in, in the, the speaker configurations between the Lingdorf and the Macintosh, and that they both have uh, uh, the 16 outputs and everything there. So uh, just showing that they're very similar there. Uh, if we look at the uh, format support even further, you know, the IMAX Enhance, we're only seeing that on the MX-123 and the Marantz counterpart. They all have Dolby Vision, uh, calibration of some sort, but the MX-170 and the Lingdorf are all using Lingdorf's Room Perfect, whereas the other models are using Odyssey. Uh, and I'll note that I haven't been able to figure out the um, who actually makes the MX-100. Is this purely a Macintosh unit, or is it Lingdorf, or is it Marantz, or something else? And some clues sway me one way versus the other way, but I can't find substantiate who actually makes the MX100. I'm almost suspicious that Macintosh might be make deriving this themselves, and chose Odyssey because they didn't want to have a a uh, a better room calibration system on the MX100 versus the MX123, so they just kept it the same. Of course, none of them support THX. We all know that's only on Onkyo receivers today uh, and, and speakers and amplifiers and things like that, but not on processors and receivers. Looking at the DACs, uh, there isn't a lot of information here to, to gather on the DACs themselves. We know that Marantz uh, recently switched from uh, using uh, an, an AKM DAC, the 4490, to an uh, a ES9010 uh, from ESS. Uh, from what I could tell, the MX123 still uses the AKM 4490 EQ, uh, but uh, no, so no word if they had to switch their chips e, uh, as well. But they're doing lower volumes than than Marant, so perhaps they had enough stock of those chips after the AKM fire to, to go forward. On the other models, we just don't have the data. Uh, the bottom line is what these processors put out. And we are seeing 
that Macintosh universally uh, says that they put out a signal to noise of 96 dBs. Interestingly, um, Marantz claims a higher specification here of 102 dBs. Uh, it would be nice to get a neutral party to uh, compare those, uh, such such as uh, we um, uh, see see out there with some of these testers online. So. Uh, I suspect that that in reality it might be a, a better story for Macintosh than what the published specifications uh, suggest. Macintosh uh, shows a total harmonic distortion of 0.005 uh, versus the 0.008 that Marantz is publishes, uh, and that uh, Macintosh and, and Lingdorf are the same there. These units are all on the PCM side, 24-bit, uh, 192 kilohertz uh, conversion. Uh, DSD, uh, we don't see indication except on the MX123 and AV8805 for support for DSD64 on the HDMI. Uh, I think I read on the manual for Macintosh on other interface, maybe USB or, or, or so forth, it will do higher, maybe DSD-128, but through the HDMI interface, it's the same as Marantz at, at DSD-64. Let's look at the I.O. here. And uh, the, the, uh, the neat thing about Macintosh is they put a lot of HDMI. I like it. Uh, we're seeing a lot more HDMI-enabled sources. So it's very good to, to have this, you know, looking at the MX170, you got eight HDMI inputs, eight outputs, three of them support ARC, one of them supports eARC on the output. Excellent. I think this is the, the most we've seen on any product. Uh, Lingdorf, even though it's uh, the, you know, the, the manufacturer, the, the design for this is Lingdorf, they're only doing five in and two out. Uh, the MX-123 is still pretty good at, at 7 in and 3 out, and uh, which matches the Marantz, by the way. The MX-100 with only four HDMI ins and one out is a little skimpy. Uh, looking at some of these other specs here, you know, uh, the, the, the Macintosh and 170 and the Lingdorf, uh, both three coax in, four, coax, four optical in, and one coax out, which is good. And the rest of them are two and two, two coax, two optical on the other models. Uh, what you see unique with the, the high-end flagship models is you get that AES EBU connection uh, for 16 inputs digitally. Uh, you don't see that on anything under $10,000 in this grouping. Uh, they all do balanced outputs on all these. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, that the Macintosh uh, only does 13.2 balanced outputs versus the Marantz does 15.2. And you can see from the pictures here I highlighted uh, that there's two extra uh, balanced outputs on the Marantz versus the Macintosh. Macintosh uh, chose to take a couple of those off. You still get them on the unbalanced connections for that the full uh, 15.2, but please note that difference. And uh, the MX100, you know, gives you the the pre-outs there as well for the for the channels. Uh, on the analog side, of course, MX100 doesn't do any analog, and neither does Lingdorf, but you get them on the other models. So the 170 gives you uh, four inputs and one output. So if you're comparing Lingdorf against Macintosh and you need some legacy support, uh, Macintosh 170 may be your boat. Uh, in fact, it even has that phono input, uh, so that could help you there. The 123 and the AB8805 have the same I.O. count for analog, you know, seven, seven stereo pairs, and then got the video for component and composite, and in high quantities, and I don't even think they're needed so much anymore, but they're there. 
Uh, phone oak jacks are also on the uh, Macintosh 123 and AV8805. And then you get a variety of infrared and triggers for your uh, interoperability, uh, your integration between uh, products on, on your rack. Let's take a, a deeper look at the video. Uh, I'm covering this right next to the I.O. I used to have a few slides later when, and when we did other videos, but I think this is a better place to cover it. And once again, we see the, see the same counts as before, but I'm going to call attention to the fact that which one of these ports are, are 2.0 and versus 2.1. And so the 170 is still 4K, so it's 2.0. The MP60 is going to give you all five at 2.1, but the MX123 and the AV8805A, uh, this is only going to give you one output that is HDMI 2.1 or 8K capable. The rest of the inputs are going to be 4K. So please note that. And of course, the MX100 is all 4K, no 8K. Uh, and the only one that doesn't support HDCP copper protection 2.3, the latest version, is the MX170, uh, unless they've done an update that we are not aware of. So yeah, the the uh, the 4K models are you know uh, limited to 60 hertz, and uh, if for those that support 8K, you're going to get 120 hertz on the 4K and 60 hertz on the 8K um, signals. They all support HDR. They all support Dolby Vision, except for the MX100. Uh, they all support hybrid log gamma. Rec 2020 shows up on the Marantz and the MX123. And the details on the 2.1 uh, that uh, some of the models publish, you get variable refresh rate on all the 8K models. You get fast V-Active with only the Lingdorf MP62.1, and you get auto low latency mode on all the 8K models. So that's what we can see from the published data on, on the video. Uh, looking now ahead, uh, on the networking side, as we noted before, they all have Ethernet. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is limited to the MX123 and AV8805A, and but that is only for source devices. There's no Bluetooth out to headphones or speakers. On the control side, uh, the only place where we can see voice control is uh, available and available prevalently is, is for the MX123 and AV8805, which is Alexa, Google, Surrey, via the AirPlay, and Josh. Uh, you know, that's a full complement there uh, The for the integration. I mean, they're all looking like, you know, they're supporting things pretty pretty well here. And um, on the support for integration, they all claim control for support. Um, none of them officially post support for Savan, RTI, Creston, and others. Although we did look up, everybody wants to claim support for Morant, so we could see clearly drivers for those. Maybe with a little more research, we could find drivers that are available for the other models as well. But this is what we know. On the scream, screaming, on the streaming ecosystem side, uh, they all support AirPlay. They're all Rune ready, and Spotify um, support except for the MX100, which isn't playing on the streaming game. So uh, overall, the MX100 is pretty low on on support. It, it's it really a niche buyer who wants a a small unit at a lower cost, that's Macintosh, from my perspective here, because it doesn't have the internet streaming capabilities either. Again, the Marantz-based um, design uh, gives you 
the most internet streaming support from Prime and Apple Music, Deezer, Napster, Pandora, SoundCloud, Spotify, Tidal, uh, et cetera. None of them come claim support for MQA uh, or YouTube Music, Kobas, uh, Indagio, uh, tuned in on the internet radio t tuner side. The, the 123 and the AV8805 use tuned in versus the Lingdorf derived models are V tuner. So uh, similar capabilities, just a different method. Here's a remote comparison here. And uh, you know, as we can see here that uh, you know, the Macintosh you know, keeps, keeps their branding on, the, on their remotes. And uh, the 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 uh, I wish they had actually redesigned the Marantz rem remote when they did the MX one twenty three because it really doesn't look at the same quality uh, in, in family as the others and you're still paying a lot for this uh, model uh, from a a weight competition here the the heaviest unit appears to be the MX one twenty three coming in at fourteen kilo grams 31 pounds uh, it is that one is the same size as I said before as the MX 170 these are the tallest uh, units uh, although the MX 100 appears to be deeper than all of them so where they lost in height they made up for a little bit in depth uh, interesting that most of these units don't publish power consumptions uh, only the Marantz model is uh, rated uh, for that at 90 watts, uh, but the others uh, consume for power is not specified. And finally, let's look at the screenshots here. And we already did some comparison uh, with uh, Macintosh and Lingdorf on the, the flagship models, and that those clearly look the same. Uh, on, on those, this is the, they're all Lingdorf with the, the room per perfect based calibration there. Similarly, you're going to see similar, uh, the, the screens are going to look the same, although there's some branding changes between Macintosh and Marantz on those screenshots, but they're the same software design uh, user experience there. And then the MX100 seems to have its own style. So this is where we get scratching our heads of who actually designed the software and hardware for the MX100. It might very well be Macintosh doing it internally. And then uh, just a little more here. This is on the playback side versus the configuration side. And uh, Macintosh has their own apps for this. So whether it's iPad or for the iPhone, um, they're all iOS. I don't know. I don't see that they had Android support, but it is clearly Macintosh um, cosmetics on these apps. Um, and Lingdorf and uh, Marantz have their own apps and playback uh, screen. So these are all different for the respective brands. So that's interesting that they're those keeping those separate. So that concludes the overview here. What do you think? Uh, you know, you've got some choices. Some of you are on the line. We say, oh, if you're on the flagship side, am I going with Lingdorf versus Macintosh? Uh, clearly, for different users, even the at a different price, there's really people will never leave Macintosh. But then some look like the the clean, uh, modern styling of the Lingdorf, and then when you're comparing the Marantz, which is a you know a high value uh, processor, versus the Macintosh, you know, are you going to spend that extra money for the promise of, of an enhanced sound quality uh, and uh, just general experience? And then the MX100, which is clearly in its class of its own. Uh, being slimlined, uh, it does seem to be a unique buyer for that one. So what's your thoughts? Your your comments would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. You know, uh, you know, post those in for us. We've got a couple more videos. The year is winding down. 
so is our overview of 2.1 HDMI 2.1 capable processors and receivers. We've got two more videos to produce for this. So far of the remaining brands out there, the only one we believe we miss is Integra. That's coming next and we'll compare it against Pioneer and Onkyo. I've got that in the works. Then we're going to do a full summary at the end. I know a lot of you are saying, well, what about these other brands that have announced? Well, to me, announced is not in hand. So uh, I'm not going by upgradable, will be coming in the future. We're just looking at what you can actually buy or have been published, posted on their website, right? So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this RightWave audio community and be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.